Hello, I'm Professor Stuart Elborn. I'm Professor of Medicine at Queen's University Belfast. I'm Pro Vice Chancellor for Medicine, Health and Life Sciences. Science is based on uncertainty. This notion is interwoven in physical and life sciences and sits at the centre of hypothesis testing. Scientific experiments uh, and research seek through testing hypotheses to challenge assumptions and therefore increase the certainty in how we interpret data and other information that comes from uh, the biological and physical world around us. All science has uncertainty. Unless that uncertainty is communicated effectively and understood, uh, decision makers may put too much or too little faith uh, in it. Firstly, I want to uh, discuss a couple of things that are really pretty certain. The SARS-CoV-2 virus, which causes uh, COVID-19, has the features we associate in general uh, with many viruses in the world. Uh, viruses uh, can exist outside uh, of a host uh, as a viron, but cannot reproduce independent of a host, which could be a plant uh, or indeed an animal. The second thing that's certain is that viruses can't think. They have a very modest amount of nucleic acids, uh, which they use in host cells to reproduce. Uh, during uh, this current pandemic, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 virus has been described in a multiple of ways that suggest it has intent. But this virus is neither evil, sly or nasty. Uh, and we are not in a war against this virus because it is simply behaving as viruses do uh, in this context. The final certainty I want to just mention is that this is not the first pandemic to affect the world, nor will it be the last. So back to basics, uh, everything we measure has a degree of uncertainty around that measurement. So any physical measurement has uh, essentially two components, a numerical value, uh, which is usually specified in a system of units, which gives the best estimate possible of the quantity being measured. And then secondly, a degree of uncertainty associated with its estimated value. Uncertainty uh, is often expressed as a range of values around uh, the value that has been measured. Sometimes these are called confidence intervals. So let's think about the COVID-19 pandemic and take, for example, the R number. So the R number, sometimes uh, pronounced as R0, uh, is a mathematical term that indicates how contagious an infectious disease is. If R0 is less than one, each existing infection causes uh, less than one new infection. In this case, the disease will decline and eventually die out. If R0 equals one, each existing infection causes one new infection. The disease will be, al will be alive and stable, but there won't be an outbreak or an epidemic. If R is more than one, each existing infection causes more than one new infection. The disease will be transmitted between people and there may be an outbreak or an epidemic. Importantly, a disease a disease's R0 value only applies when everyone in the population is completely vulnerable to the disease. This means no one has been vaccinated and no one has had the disease before and there's no way to control the disease. So R0 is a measure of disease potential and once uh, response measures are put in place, such as screening, quarantine for example, the actual transmission can be lowered. The actual or effective version of the reproductive number, as opposed to the basic version, is known as RT. That is the viral's actual transmission rate at a given time. This value uh, has a major uh, focus from our scientists trying to measure or derive it, uh, and from our policymakers and politicians uh, to help with decision making. The RT number is calculated using uh, age stratified regional transmission models. So for this critical number, there are assumptions in the model used to calculate it. And there's also measurement error from the numbers going into the model. I'm really just using this an example 
uh, of a, a key measurement which is driving decision making nationally and regionally, but must be uh, used with an understanding of the level of uncertainty uh, that is appropriate to this particular value. This leads to both mathematical and uh, societal uncertainty and can be very disconcerting. Uh, the scientific estimates, despite their uncertainty, however, provide a really helpful guide uh, for decision making, which then can be modified uh, depending on the real world outcome. This will require two things from society. Firstly, that we understand the uncertainty of the science. But secondly, uh, we need to appreciate that the science has been extraordinarily helpful in the decision making so far, uh, particularly around how uh, models uh, and predictions have helped us manage uh, the initial phase of uh, this pandemic where the NHS was not overwhelmed because uh, significant increases in, uh, in intensive care beds, ventilators and availability of hospital beds uh, had been uh, delivered. We do need to learn to continue to live with questioning minds to deal with uh, future challenges from nature, which may uh, result in further pandemic pandemics or other natural and physical uh, consequences of the dominance of human beings on this planet. This pandemic should teach us that we need to understand these uncertainties across the globe and be humble and collaborative in our approach to containing them. We need to figure out, as a species, how to live in a healthy and balanced ecosystem where we respect, support and work collaboratively with each other as human beings and have the respect uh, and uh, stewardship over uh, the diversity of the natural resources uh, that we have on the planet. Thank you.